say how happy I am to be back in Bhutanishwar. I was here uh, just a few months ago with the Parliamentary Committee on Skilling. So thank you all for uh, inviting me here. Thank you for the warm welcome. It is also heartening to see so many students amongst the audience today when we are discussing the future of work and skilling. I think we can all accept that the most important stakeholder, the most important beneficiary of any conversation about the future of skilling and indeed the future of work are today's students and young Indians from all over the country, including in Odisha. The the conference is of course about the future of work and skilling and there is a sub-context to it that has been beautifully phrased. It is at the intersection of logistics, coastal economies, sustainability, skills. So, this is an interesting opportunity not just to talk about skills, but skills in the context of logistics. Not just to talk about logistics, but talk about logistics in the context of coastal economies. And not just to talk about the coastal economy, but to talk about that in the context of sustainability. So as Mr. Murthy very nicely put out there for everybody to understand, we are really talking about future and work and scaling but talking about future of work and skilling in the context of these trends, in the context of logistics becoming more and more important, in the context of coastal economies becoming more and more important, and sustainable growth, we can certainly, one of the articles of faith in how we shape our future, how we shape our nation's future, and the world's future. Let me share some of my thoughts with you, and then of course, you have the whole day of seminars and workshops to also listen to, but let me just share some of my thoughts with you. India's presidency of the G20 is certainly at a very interesting time, and I use the word interesting in a very broad sense, interesting time for the world. And this interesting time of the, in, for the world represents both opportunities and challenges. We are as a world coming out of this serious disruptive black swan event called the COVID pandemic that laid low people's lives, livelihoods, economies all around the world. And then if that was not bad enough, who would have thought in the year 2022-2023 Europe, which has seen World War I, World War II, and should be the last place for another war in this modern age, we see another war, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Both these are important determinants into how the world is getting redrawn, how the world order is being reshaped. Let us for a minute think about COVID pandemic, there are many students here, you all understand the concept of exam, you all understand the concept of report cards. It is like the whole world, every country, every people, every government went through an exam, a trying exam, a disruptive exam. The US, China, India, UK, Japan, Korea, all the peoples of each of these countries had to go through this trial and tribulation of the COVID pandemic. And after the pandemic, if you look at the report card of which country has done well, which country has not done well, which people have performed admirably during this difficult period, go to the West, look at the US, they are dealing with all the consequences of overstimulation, they have an economy that is uh, today suffering from inflation and threatening to go into recession. The country to our north has gone through 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th time of lockdown, China. UK is seeing hyperinflation. And India has emerged out of all of this 
as a demonstration of the will of its people, the resilience of our people, the capabilities of our government, as a nation that is the fastest growing economy in the world, that has delivered 220 crore vaccines to its people voluntarily. And so therefore there is this redrawing today of the global world order where people are looking at India and the Indian way of doing things and the Indian people's responses and our capabilities with a lot more respect than ever any time in the past. I talk about Russia-Ukraine, both during COVID and Russia-Ukraine, a new topic suddenly emerged in the conversations around government tables, around business tables. The issue was about logistics and supply chains. 